I am here today for a very exciting video. I'm actually going to film this in two parts and this is my March to April book haul and this one is going to be part one. I will do part two and link that when it goes up as well so look out for that. I'm sure it will be very very soon. In the month of March, some of you guys might have seen on Twitter, I actually had some time back down at home. As you can see I'm still back home. I'm going back up to uni tomorrow and I had some time at home because it was the Easter holidays but also because I was doing work experience in London at Hachette who are a very very big UK publisher and they have a really wonderful office based in London near the Thames so I love it there. I've already done work experience there once in the past and this was my second time. The past time I went and did it in the publicity and marketing section and this time I was in the editorial which I found so interesting and I absolutely loved it there and I was so welcomed by everyone and it was just the most splendid time I could ever have asked for and it made me absolutely so certain that this is what I want to do. I want to go into publishing, I want to be part of the team that makes books and authors and everything awesome because it's such such a good industry and I love it so much and I've just I've been blessed to go there twice and have such a good time both times and I really loved it. But whilst I was there they were very very kind and once I had finished my two week placement they actually offered to give me some free books which is always always nice and before that they'd also sent me a few books for review so I've got a, quite a few things from Hachette generally. Hodder is the place I was working, Hodder and Stoughton. I was working in their branch which is part of Hachette. All very confusing I know but basically it's all one company or all owned by one company. I'll start off with the books that they gave me and then the second lot of books is a ton of books that I picked up whilst I was in London with Eleanor. We went on another little London book crawl and for some reason all of the bookshops that we went to were secondhand bookshops or used bookshops and they all had amazing stuff that we really really wanted. So that was kind of crazy and very cool but it meant that we ended up picking up a lot of books. So that's why this video has to be split into two parts. I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna start off with the books I got very kindly from Hachette. The first of those is a series that they sent to me or the first two books in a series. It is Time Bomb by Scott Andrews and the second one which isn't out yet, this one is called Second Lives as you can see on the spine, comes out in May on the 19th of May so it will be out soon-ish. So I'm not going to read the blurb for this one but I'm glad that they've sent me the first one because I haven't read it yet and it says New York City 2141 Yojana Patel throws herself off of a skyscraper but never hits the ground. Cornwall 1640 gentle young Dora Prudenic newcomer to Sweet Clover Hall to work discovers a badly burnt woman at the bottom of a flight of stairs. When she reaches out to comfort the dying woman she is flung through time and space. Sounds a bit weird, sounds a little bit dystopian, time travel, sci-fi crossed. I'm very intrigued. So this is the first book and this one is the second and I think you'll agree that the second one has an absolutely stunning cover and yeah, very excited to try these out. So I'm sure I will get to them in the next few months if not before they're released. And then the next few books I got from Hachette when I was actually there and I'd finished my work experience so they took me to where they have a amazing bookshelf that like opens out so there's just rows and rows and rows of books they offered to let me choose whatever I wanted because they were very kind so I managed to pick up a couple of books that I was very intrigued by and a couple of books I'd never heard of and one book I was really excited about so I'm gonna start with that one. So the book I had been eyeing up the whole time I was working there was The Butcher's Hook. This is by Janet Ellis and I actually was eyeing this up because if you haven't seen Jen's latest podcast, it might not be her latest but I'll link the podcast below, she did a podcast where she interviewed Janet Ellis, the author of this book and Janet Ellis was such a lovely person to hear from. She just seemed to understand her book really well and seemed to come across really well on the podcast and she made me want to buy it and she made me want to read it. So when I saw that this was actually published by Hachette or Two Roads technically which is an imprint of theirs I was like could I maybe be cheeky and have a copy of The Butcher's Hook please? And they said yes so that's really exciting. I hear that this is quite a gruesome one. I think it's set in sort of a historical time period and there's a little quote on the back so I'll just read that. Do you know what this is? He holds a short twist of thick metal in the shape of a letter S, sharpened at both ends. I shake my head. A butcher's hook, he says, testing the tip of his finger against each point. A 
perfect design. Whichever way up you use it, it's always ready. One end to hook, the other to hang. It has only one simple purpose. He stands on a stool and fixes it over the bar above him. It waits there, empty. He climbs down. Pleasing, isn't it? And from what I can gather, this is about a young lady who, you know, doesn't want to be the prim and proper lady all the time. She has a real fascination with butchers and the sort of visceral thing that they do as their job. So it's basically about her and how she gets involved with some butchers, I guess. Sounds a bit weird, sounds very dark and a bit twisted. So I'm looking forward to this and I'm hoping I'll really enjoy it. It's not too long. And look at the cover. It is just beautiful. So... I'm sure it's going to be fascinating. Then there were a few that the lovely Anne and Fleur picked out for me. They both work at Hodescape. You might have seen them on the Twitter of Hodescape before. They're both lovely and I love both of them so much and they made me feel so happy whilst I was working there. But they suggested that I pick up the rest of these, so I'm going to show you them. The first one they gave to me is Mr. Memory by Marcus Sedgwick. This one has a stunning cover, I'm sure you'll all agree. Look at that, it is beautiful. And it comes out in July of 2016, so it's not out yet. In Paris, at the end of the 19th century, a man with a perfect memory murders his wife. But that is only the start of the story. It says it's for fans of Scarlett Thomas, Carlos Ruiz Zafon, and Patrick Seuss kind. And it's also by a highly acclaimed multiple prize winning author of young adult and children's novels. So I'm looking forward to this and hopefully it'll be a fun one. I've got a lovely cover all the way around. Beautiful. So yeah, it looks really, really fun and I'm sure it'll be a bit dark, but a bit entertaining. The next one I have is one I was eyeing up a little bit whilst I was there. This one is Poison City and it's the first book in a fantastical South African crime series for fans of Ben Aronovich and Lauren Bukes, who, I'll be honest, I don't like either of those authors very much. But I'm hopeful about this anyway, because I don't like comparing authors to other authors, because I think it alienates people who didn't like those other authors. Anyway, back to this. It says, it's also for anyone who's ever wondered what Harry Potter might have looked like a few years and a few drinks down the line. So it sounds kind of crazy and cool. And on the front, it just says, Gideon Tao fights demons, but he's no good guy. He has a wand, but don't you dare call him Harry Potter. He has a talking dog for a spirit guide, but he's a mean drunk and he sure as hell ain't nobody's best friend. So it sounds cool, crazy, and like it's gonna be an interesting one. I'm looking forward to it. The next one I have from them is The Month of the Midnight Sun. This is written by Cecilia Eckback, who I believe wrote Wolf Winter, which apparently has been very highly received. An orphaned boy brought up to serve the state as a man, a rich young woman incapable of living by the conventions of society, neither is prepared for the journey into the heat, mystery, violence and disorienting perpetual daylight of the far north. Sounds like it's going to be interesting and it's a Nordic noir novel. Didn't know that was a genre but I like the sound of it so I'm definitely intrigued and I always enjoy stuff that's set in icy regions of the world or fantastical icy regions so I'm sure this will be very fascinating. The next one that Anne picked out for me is this one, Pompidou Posse or Pose, I'm not sure. I think it's about a person who lives in Paris. It's by Sarah Lotz who normally writes horror so apparently this is a little bit twisted. It's the late 80s, you're 17, Margaret Thatcher runs the world and Banana Rama is huge and you've just burned something down. You could confess, get expelled and spend the rest of your miserable existence living with your parents and working at a sandwich shop. Or you could pack up and run away to Paris. It's no choice at all, is it? It certainly isn't for Vicky, when she and her best friend Sage accidentally set fire to the pottery shed on the grounds of their art school. As you do. Vicky and Sage are young, talented and they have the world at their feet. They don't need money, they're artists. They can make what they need on the streets outside Paris's famous Pompidou Centre, one of the greatest art museums in the world. Paris represents everything they've ever wanted. Total freedom in the most glamorous, vibrant city in the world. But living rough even with your best friend by your side isn't quite the romantic experience Vicky expects, and over the course of the most extraordinary year of her life she'll have to do whatever it takes from couch surfing to fire eating to survive, and watch helplessly as Sage drifts further and further away from her. So it sounds like it's going to be quite an interesting sort of somewhat contemporary novel I guess. Yeah I, I'm looking forward to this one. Again it's not too long and I haven't really read anything set in Paris for ages. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that I've read set in Paris so that would be cool because I love Paris as a city. It's a lovely place. And the last one that they gave to me is this one. It is Nunslinger and it's by Stark Holborn. 
as you can see, none, not gun. So don't be confused. This one sounds crazy but awesome. The year is 1864. Sister Thomas Josephine, an innocent Visitandine nun from St. Louis, Missouri, is making her way west to the promise of new life in California. When her wagon train is attacked on the wild Lamy Plains, Thomas Josephine finds her faith tested and her allegiance torn between Lieutenant Theodore F. Carthy, a man too beautiful to be true, and the mysterious grifter Abraham C. Murr. Falsely accused of murder, she goes on the run, all the while hunted by the man who has become dangerously obsessed with her. Her journey will take her from the forbidden, snow-blasted peaks of the mountains to the hottest, most hostile desert on the earth, from Nevada to Mexico to the Indian Territory, and her faith will be tested in ways she could never imagine. Sounds absolutely bonkers but really fun. This one's quite a long one, it's like over 600 pages so it is a, a fairly long one but I think it'll be good and I'm looking forward to it. And I really like the cover even though it's quite weird, I really like it, it's just nice. So that's the last one that they gave to me whilst I was working there. So the one that Jen sent on to me is this one. It is What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours by Helen Oyemi. This is a short story collection, I think. The short stories collected in What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours are linked by more than the exquisitely winding prose of their creator, Helen Oyemi's ensemble cast of characters slip from the pages of their own stories only to surface in another. The reader is invited into a world of lost libraries and locked gardens, of marshlands where the drowned dead live, and a city where all the clocks have stopped. Students hone their skills at puppet school, the homely wench society commits a guerrilla book swap, and lovers exchange books and roses on St Geordie Day. It is a collection of towering imagination, marked by baroque beauty and deep sensuousness. And it sounds like it's going to be wonderful. I haven't read any Helen Oyemi yet, but I've heard so many good things about her from Mercedes and Jen, and lots of other people who enjoy this sort of fiction. And I'm fairly certain I will enjoy it because it's got quotes on the back from Sarah Waters and Amy Bender and people that everyone always enjoys. So fingers crossed I will. It's also got a really, really lovely final edition, but I'd love this one too. So the arc and the final both look gorgeous. And it was on my most anticipated list for this year or the first half of this year. So very happy to have it and I'm sure I will read it very soon. It's one that I was sent very kindly by Ace Books and Ace Books will be publishing this very soon, I believe. Um, it is called Arena and it's by Holly Jennings and it's a YA about video gaming which I'm very excited about because I seem to really really enjoy video game focused science fiction and YA science fiction so I seem to just really like that combination so fingers crossed this will be good. I did actually request this one from the publisher so they didn't just send this one to me I asked for it and it says every week Callie Ling fights to the death on national TV. She's died hundreds of times and it never gets easier. The Rage Tournaments, the Virtual Gaming League's elite competition where the best gamers in the world compete in a no-holds-barred fight to the digital death, every bloody kill is broadcast to millions, every player is a modern gladiator, leading a life of ultimate fame, responsible only for entertaining the masses. And though their weapons and armour are digital, the pain is real. Chosen to be the first female captain in Rage Tournament history, Kali Ling is at the top of the world until one of her teammates overdoses. Now she must confront the truth about the tournament, because it is much more than a game. And even in the real world, not everything is as it seems. It sounds so interesting. If they can pull off everything they're promising with that blurb, I will be so happy because it just sounds really, really interesting. So hopefully, hopefully this will be awesome. Another one that I was sent by a publisher for review is this one, which looks crazy but very interesting. It is called An Asteroid Made of Dragons by G. Derek Adams and it's officially been selected by the Sword and Laser group who you might know from YouTube and I just got an email about this and was asked whether I would be interested in reviewing it so I said okay I will give it a try and I'm gonna read you the back because it made me quite intrigued. It says, when a lone goblin researcher stumbles across an artifact containing a terrifying message that the world is in grave immediate peril, she scrambles to find help. A very unusual asteroid, one constructed as a cage for dragons, is headed straight for the planet, and Xenon is the only person in the world who knows. As she clambers across the hill and dale with her quill and journal to untangle the mystery, She'll need plenty of luck to find the right clues and the right sort of help. Meanwhile, our heroes have their own problems. They have a bank to rob, a sea to cross, and a kingdom to infiltrate. 
Luckily, Rhyme is a wild mage. The laws of reality quiver when she gives them a stern look. And her guardian, Jonas, wields a reasonably sharp sword. When the wise are underfunded and the brave are overbooked, can the world be saved from destruction? It just sounds funny. It sounds like it's going to be quite humorous and entertaining. And I am looking forward to trying this one out. So fingers crossed it's a good one. So those are all of the books I was kindly sent by friends or given by publishers for free. Some of which I requested, some of which I chose myself and some of which were just sent to me. So thank you to all of the publishers who sent me stuff and to Jen for sending on her copy. Thank you all and just thank you so much to Hodra and Stoughton for making me feel so incredibly welcome at my work experience and I just, I honestly, it's some of the best memories and I will always remember it and be happy remembering it because it will be like one of the first stepping stones to hopefully getting on my future career path which will be so exciting so yeah I just, I loved it and I had such a good time and I'm really looking forward to the future and all that stuff. So this is part one and there will be a part two, as I said, I've still got all the books that I picked up with Eleanor to show you and there's quite a few. Look out for that one coming really, really soon. Thank you all for watching. Leave me comments below saying if you want to read any of the ones that I've just shown you or if you have already read them, what you thought. And I will see you all in part two. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.